Ramble. Big old shout out to our buddies at Raycon for sponsoring this week's episode. Welcome to the Tripod. This is the four friends who talk about trying. It's Keith, Ned, Zach, and Eugene. We are going to talk about parents. Nice. Parents nice. just don't understand. That's yeah. a Will Smith song. And about parenting styles. And also, speaking of Will Smith, who is the genie in the live-action Aladdin, we're also going to talk about Disney stuff. Parents and Disney, get ready. This is a very PG podcast that won't be PG at all. Uh, let's go to uh, <laughs> a secret, right, Miles? Do you have a secret for us? Oh, uh, no secrets today. Well, fuck. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. why we're just have down. we fallen that we're, far down we're the charts? Totally oh, you know what? We got you know what? We're if we don't, losers. if we don't have a secret from a fan, Miles, can you tell us a secret that you have? Yeah, uh, and also be sure to leave us a five star review. I will on <laughs> iTunes. Absolutely, Miles. Tell us a secret that we don't know about you, and nothing so incriminating that we have to fire you. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, I will say that I don't know much about you, so you That's know, true. pretty much anything will be new information to yeah, me. Yeah, right. Remember when Miles just like casually dropped that he has a titanium shoulder? I do. Isn't that oh, that oh, was yeah. fascinating. I forgot about mm-hmm. your shoulder. What like happened? Wolverine. That- okay, so I, I fell off a slack line. I got a big head. I thought, I'm going to be a slack liner. Slack, what, what, what? Slack, slack line is like line? a tightrope, but it's a little bit thicker and it's a little more elastic. You oh. always see it in colleges. Mm-hmm. People string them up between two trees and yep. they look like doofuses. Oh, they look this like is like doofs. a trust exercise. And they, they bounce on it, right? They bounce and you bounce yeah. and you can do people who are good at it can do backflips. I yeah. could not do a backflip <laughs> and I, w- I was running towards it. I jumped and my legs locked. I hit it and then it just rubber banded me into the sky <laughs> and <clears throat> back on the Team my Rocket <laughs> blasting up again! <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that, and then I is hit that my like a common right occurrence when you jump into a, a flexible elastic band. Oh yeah, it was a bad idea. I was a sophomore <laughs> in high school, and uh, oh, this was a, in high school. I have a six scar. Have you guys seen my scar? No, no. Show, show us. It. I got a six. Whoa! whoa. whoa. For those uh, not watching the video feed, it's a uh, I'd say a thick scar. It actually kind of reminds me of the, the scar size of a hot dog. I know. Wow. You know, the scar underneath my neck used to look like that. So it's got. How do you describe that scar? It's called keloiding. It's yes. what happens when a scar grows outward. So it kind of looks like a shark bite. Or yeah, like and it's a little a three burn. dimensional. Yeah. I gotta say, Miles, that looking at that made you just twenty times hotter. Thanks, man. And you didn't get drafted by the Chicago. Cubs to be the pitcher. I for almost any short did. Of time. Yeah, they told me they wanted it, but I was too tall. Wow. Uh, mm. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Miles is tall. That's also why he can't be an astronaut. Yeah, mm-hmm. too tall. Well, Miles, how tall are you? Six foot uh, eleven. <laughs> 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 six foot thirteen. Yeah, no, I'm six foot five. Yeah, he's taller than Keith. Actually, that's too tall to be a Disney character. I'm really? too tall to be a Disney character. Yeah. So I think oh, maybe really? I can. There's fit really the strict costume. rules what, about what, it. Uh, what Disney character would you want? What's your dream? Well, it depends. Mascot? I've heard uh, a lot of tea from Disney employees who work in the park mm. that there's like a hierarchy of. Uh, Oh, what really? you can be in a park. So obviously oh, so the Mickey Mouse is first. No, oh, the top is the princesses, princesses. for mm-hmm. sure. Because they have their faces out. How Your faces are out. Oh. So being the princesses and like general like princes, that's the huge one. Then right under is Chip the major. Dale. Yeah, the major like what do they call the large costumes with the big heads? The Mickey Mouse is the Mascots? goofies. Yeah, the kind of mascot style costumes. Just, yeah, I don't know. Fuzzies. And then lower is just general ensemble cast stuff. <laughs> Fuzzies. But yeah, being a princess is... Uh, is wow, apparently so the, the bomb. Princess is, so like Cinderella is probably number one. Yeah, they treat them like she has a whole castle. Yeah, yeah. And also the Starring parade Asian princesses <laughs> are like the the, 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 gig, the parade princesses. So there's the princesses who take the pictures, and then there's princesses who are in the parades. Yes. And the parade is the best gig because you don't have to talk. You don't have to talk you just to anybody. Wait and smile. Yep. But ever, but it's like somehow it is like the oh that's the princess that matters because you're in the parade yeah but don't they have to dance for like 90 minutes straight probably yeah but better than having kids scream in your face for two hours straight that's a good point yeah Uh, i I almost dances look tiring though i almost did that disney college internship program. (gasps) oh really to be like a character yeah What, what is that well, it's like you go and it's basically they pay for your lodging and food and they give you a very shitty paycheck and then you just work at Disney. It's a big thing actually for international people. Oh, yeah. Because it's a way to come work in America. Um, at Epcot, mm-hmm. everyone is from another country yep, yep. that works at the country By spots. Basically, everyone who lives in Anaheim and Orlando might work for Disney. Yeah, they pretty yeah. much do. And if yeah. they don't, they just go there anyway Did all the time. Did you know 
<laughs> what is this voice Zach? I just remembered a fun fact, so I wanted to drop it. I, I did a lot of Disney research at one point in my life. Zach's did fun you know? fact. Oh, yeah, wait, I like that. Zach's, Zach's fun, fun fact. fact. Did you know that the city of Anaheim has a... Oh, wait, actually, I did God that wrong. God damn it. God. Disney <clears throat> has a larger... Okay, yeah, give it again. Zach's, Zach's fun, fun fact. fact. Did you know that Disney has a larger police force than the entire city of Anaheim? Wow. Isn't that crazy? Wow. wow. And they have such specified jobs. So there's like one person whose job it is to just watch the cameras on like Splash Mountain and all those. And if someone flips them off or gives like a gang sign or like yeah. lifts their shirt, they immediately, the photo never reaches. That's like, that's yeah. someone's full job is just to monitor that. I know because I flipped off the Space Mountain three times in a row and on the third time they caught me and it, well, I didn't have a picture. <laughs> oh, oh and the, I, the two times you got through. I got oh, through. Oh, nice, yeah. man, nice. They just delete the picture? Yeah. yeah, yeah which wow. It ruins it for the whole train. Yeah. It's a family-friendly park. That happened to me last time I was at Disney. Is I I was like, where's my picture? I must have flipped off the camera or, or somebody behind Maybe me. Somebody behind you ruined it for you. <laughs> it might have been me. It might have been the me. last time we were there. We, we were there. <laughs> no. I actually went okay. like a week after we went really? there. Really? Yeah, it's my girlfriend's birthday. So. I might go this weekend. It's my wife's birthday. It's a fun birthday spot. Ah! Ah! I love going. <laughs> oh, yeah! I love Disney. Disneyland. Keith, I think you would make a really good Goofy. I, uh, that was actually that was one the of the only characters job. I could with the be. height. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's tall. Because he's, he's tall. tall. Height restriction. Mm -hmm. So most people who play like Mickey, <gasps> Minnie, Donald, they're all women. Because they're so short. I knew this. Yeah. Uh, the most exciting thing that ever happened to me in my life <laughs> is we were... At, I've, by the way, guys, I'm sick and I'm loaded up on Dayquil and I'm feeling weird. Dayquil's good for that. <laughs> yeah, man. And Claritin. I just double dosed uh -oh. it. Because like, let's just fucking... Let's rock it. You is that bad for you? Too? Yeah. Is it? It's yeah. bad. Well, but what Consult if I'm sick? a medical professional. What if I'm sick and have allergies uh, did you have did you have caffeinated tea this morning too yeah I've literally those, i've been drinking it on camera you're gonna be fucked up why Th those are both cardiac stimulants so like uh oh I, yeah it's basically like but okay amphetamines hold, yeah but what if i'm <laughs> sick and have allergies and i'm sleepy <laughs> I'm you're gonna you. die. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'll be so fine. Should but I you're stop just gonna drinking tea? Fun heart attack. No, the, tea, the tea is low enough caffeine. Man, it's not this gonna... Disney parenting podcast really turned us to drugs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was in yoga last night and I had an allergy attack right when yoga started, and I started sneezing like crazy, and then I couldn't breathe during yoga. But bringing this back to drugs, there was a man in front of me who was definitely on drugs. And he just kind of stood and swayed on his yoga mat the whole time and didn't do <laughs> yoga. <laughs> and it was and his pants were falling down and it was very distracting. How much was this yoga class that this man is allowed to I don't know. It was yoga. At, it was at Aloe Yoga, which is like a very Fru fru yoga. I don't studio. know. Maybe he, he was, was just doing tree pose yeah. for sixty <laughs> minutes. He was doing yeah. wobbly tree. It was like he would kind of go into like a lunge, but just kind of like split his legs. <laughs> now that's how I like to do yoga. Mm -hmm. Wait, so it's what was too much effort? What was, can I talk about yoga for a second? I would, be, yeah. I would be a door. It, it, would, apparently, the deal with yoga is you're supposed to. Uh, push your mind and body to its limits. Uh uh. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to do glorified wall sits for an hour. I want to run. I want to lift weights. I want to do things that get my body moving. Yoga, it's like stand in one position and hold. You don't want to pretend hold. that there's roots growing out of your feet into the ground <sighs> that are connecting you to this universe's the magnetism. spiritual elements do not do it for me. I know that it might do it for many other people. My wife is certainly one of them, but for me, it seems like a colossal waste of time. And this has been Ned Fulmer's, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. Also, Ned, haven't you, haven't you been injured like every other day of your life? Yeah, yeah it's because I go hard. hard. You know, I agree with you. I've never really been into yoga. I need like either really loud pumping music or aggressive, hard impact movement. Yeah, I don't yeah. even like jogging. I would take a sprint over a jog any day. The longer the race gets, the more turned off I am. Wait, but the moment- Three you, miles, no thank you. The thing you said about roots growing from your feet, I actually imagine that when I'm in yoga and I imagine I, uh, my roots I commingling to. with the roots of others in the That's class. That's what they tell you And their do. roots are, their roots give me strength. It's so, <laughs> That's some, yeah. It's like people who stand on magnets. 
you, what are you doing? You're not. I had a roommate yeah. who stood on magnets. Wait, I'm what like, do you mean? He literally had fucking magnets, and for ten minutes a day, he would stand on the magnets. That sounds great. Because doing that somehow would reset his body to be more connected. I'm like, dude. Okay. You're yeah. On yes. Magnets. A lot of this shit is bogus, but also I think that we think we know more than we do. Like yeah, we have this internal logic. We do. No. No. We no. We did research though. That <laughs> no, there's a lot of research that magnets do fucking nothing. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying magnets <laughs> so, are I, well. Well, you came you're after right, my right. magnet talk to say <laughs> we don't know the magic of the world. We no, don't we do. Understand Sci- the there's, world. there's no we millions know, we of know scientists. a lot of things about the world. I did this, but, but please continue. Tell well, us the about mysteries. the mysteries. <laughs> so I did this crazy oh, allergy life. test thing when I was a kid, uh, and it seems so fuck. I forget what it's called, but basically they put like a concentrated vial of corn syrup or or uh, wheat or whatever. And so you, you hold the vial and you lay on your back and you put your arm up and the, the woman comes and she presses against your arm. And it's just like a little bit, right? And if you're strong or if you're normal, you can resist it. But then she puts a vial of this thing in your hand and your arm goes limp and falls down. It makes no sense to me, but it was a th- like I experienced it. It was and then she treats each individual allergy. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's crazy. It made no fucking sense to me. Why would holding a vial of of like pollen in my hand make my arm go limp there's nothing that i understand about how my body works that should do that but it did i've experienced that because you don't understand it doesn't mean someone doesn't understand it but it's like that's like that's a that, pseudo- that's not like a mystical thing that's, you're yeah, at an no, allergy clinic no but it's like a pseudo science no, allergy n- probably not i mean i don't know how it works either they okay well i didn't finish they like massage your your uh, uh, pressure points and then do like chakra shit. And okay, then no, that it. sounds like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I believe in? I believe in the power of placebo. Mm. I believe that anything... Yeah, it's a big thing. And you know what? I actually respect it because, you know, who knows? We don't know enough to draw the line necessarily all the time between what is now firm science because that could be pseudoscience in five years. Uh, I do it's believe true. that people believe in what they choose to believe and mm-hmm. they live their life by it. So well, if body, yoga makes you feel more spiritual and better and makes you a better person, fucking go for do it. Do it. I love you know it. what the most powerful muscle in your body is? Your, the mind. your, your heart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was going to say your brain because it's true. If yeah. you believe in something, oftentimes that is more powerful than uh, actual medicine. Yeah. Uh, except for the fact that actual medicine is pretty powerful and as someone who's on two types of medicine and caffeine right now i can tell you i'm starting to feel it in my heart <laughs> yeah so have, have you met going. everyone knows that person uh who believes they're sick all the time and then i think they make themselves sick yes mm-hmm. i know exactly there's a lot of people about. like that and, and by the way people look down on the placebo effect but i actually think it's an amazing thing it's oh like no i think it's fantastic the body's ability yeah. to believe is is miraculous it's not yeah. miraculous it's it's amazing it's power there's a the whole mind. new york times article about that this weekend about yeah. people that get sick but they don't know why a little bit of something on the tip of your nose is I it also, medicine like, what is, is it it no, looks like it was sap. Like it looks jelly. like tea put, tree sap do you put sunscreen on every day did you put jelly yeah, on your nose sunscreen on. oh is it an is orange it color sunscreen? It was orange. It's gone now. Maybe yeah. Wes was splish splashing with his berry. It, no, breakfast. it looks like when tree sap comes out of a bark, sap. Uh, out of bark. Was it a booger? No. Did I have a booger on no. my nose? No. It was. It might have been it my sunscreen. Booger. What do you guys it think was about? <laughs> was it? <laughs> that was that a, a uh, how? That was the amazing thing is how long do you sit with a friend before you tell them there's something? I thought maybe it was just sweat on a pimple, so I didn't want to. No, be there's like, no pimple. It was just. I know. That I'm surprised now. My skin is clear. Baby. It's very, very sweaty. I'm very sweaty. Like it was right. amber colored. It was like the how strange. Yeah, I don't see it. It's not on my hands. No. Oh man. What do you guys think about like the the studies where they tell plants that they're beautiful and then they tell other plants that they're ugly? Oh, it's like the the little elementary school experiment where you play classical versus heavy metal. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. To plants. And so the study is like, if you tell it it's beautiful every day, it it grows better. But then I've also always wondered if, if that the one that they're telling beautiful, the people who are training it, are like not uh, subconsciously also feeding it better and also treating it better because it's not affecting the plant; it's affecting them as yeah, the caregivers. Maybe it's a human psychology experiment. I yeah. hate my plant in my house, and it grows great. <laughs> I walk by it every day and say, "Fuck you, <laughs> Philip." The plant we call it Philip. Well, yeah, at least you gave it a name. Oh yeah, which so is I could love in its own it. way. Though the music one is strange because I feel like obviously the bass in heavy metal is going to be way more like harsh on a plant mm-hmm. when you put a speaker next to it. Because some people feel better when they listen to heavy metal. 
Yeah. Well, that's a, a whole thing about breast milk is everyone thinks that breast milk is way better for babies and, and it's, oh, breast is best is this is this common <laughs> refrain. Uh-huh. It's a thing. It, breast it, it, is best. In the 80s, it was all about formula. Now, it's all about breast milk. Back but to the a lo- there's a lot of confounding uh, <clears throat> studies where they'll actually show, well, actually, um, the mothers in this study that were using all breast milk also happen to have more disposable income, free time, and uh, uh, were at a higher socioeconomic status and could um, like spend more time reading to their kids because they weren't working two jobs or something like that. And that's why you can't have a double variable experiment. Welcome back to <laughs> Ned Don't Do That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double variable experiment. Ned, do you know what year it is? 2019? It's 2019. And 2019, I mean, it's like we're just so in the future now, right? Oh, yeah. And the the least you could do, you know, is have some dope wireless earbuds at this oh, point. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my phone doesn't even have a jack anymore. You're going to think I'm going to tell you to go buy like a, a $300 pair. That's crazy. I'm not going to do that. I can't afford that. Don't go do that. Instead, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing. The company was actually co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Cardi B are obsessed. Ned. What? Yes. Oh, if they like it, then I like it. And I if I like it, then you'll probably like it. Raycon's E50 wireless earbuds have totally changed the game for me. They're so comfortable and so easy to take anywhere. And I'm being serious. My headphone game was so bad. I had this cable that was like broken, but I've still been using them. And then the, the cable got tied up. So I'm really happy to finally be free. I'm untethered, Ned. Wow. I can walk around the room wow. with earbuds in and my phone in my pocket and I can listen to <sighs> stuff. Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. Ugh, stems? Blech. <laughs> and of course, they don't just look great, they sound great too. That's really the most important part, right? That it actually sounds good. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds for everyone in a range of fun colors at an unbeatable price. That means you could get the Try Guys colors as your oh. as your earbuds. Oh. Go to buyraycon.com slash tryguys to get 20% off your order. That's buyraycon.com slash tryguys for 20% off Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, now's the time to get an amazing deal. One more time, buyraycon.com slash try guys. Bring it back to Disneyland. Zach, what was that huge, crazy? Oh, yeah. You said the best thing that ever happened in your life. Oh, yeah, I really <laughs> did. I, I derailed that. Hard, yeah, but like, I? let's bring Wait. it back because you set it up and I think the what? audience will be mad. He said, This is the best thing that's ever happened in my life. <laughs> the best and thing. And then we started that... talking about pollen in your hand. He started talking about yoga and mm. his, the, the oh, drugs yeah. he's Yeah, I derailed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick medicine update. My palms are sweaty. Zach, you're derailing again. Answer the question. Uh, Just stay we, on one thing at a time. We went to Disney, and I decided to wait in line for the Mickey Mouse. Mm-hmm. And I got to the Mickey Mouse line at mm-hmm. the end, and Mickey Mouse like went, oh, like, but they can't talk because they're Mickey. And Mickey Mouse started pointing and was like, "I know you," and was telling me that that she, I assume, knew who I was. But and the w- reason I knew because I didn't get it is I didn't have my glasses on and Nikki was like miming like where are your glasses and I'm like holy shit Mickey knows about me I, and knows my personal details and I think you were with I me I was Ned. with you yeah, yeah. I and remember then, this and then Mickey was like where's the tall one yeah <laughs> yeah like, tall one with he was like where's the tall one with glasses it was amazing and then, and then she mimed a, a, a labor pain simulation yeah <laughs> so you talk about feeling special you go to the most magical place on earth mm-hmm. and Mickey it's like, wow, Mickey, I'm a fan. And Mickey's like, nah, dog, I'm your I'm fan. a fan of you. <laughs> Who was with me at Epcot when I went for the first time? I, I know This me. is the story I've been thinking about the whole time, and it's yeah, been making me giggle. This is a fun story. Uh, first time at Epcot, I was with uh, Zach and Keith. Uh, Ned, you were, yeah, I some, think you were somewhere else. You, you went were, to Disney before the wedding, and we went to Disney after We were all in Florida for mm-hmm. our friend's wedding. Um, and, of course, Epcot is a magical place where you can drink yep. every country around this giant fucking yeah, and there's like 15 has of specialty them. cocktails mm-hmm. yeah that's a lot of drinks so you know me that's i said this is where drinks. i'm going i'm gonna hit up every country i'm gonna get two drinks in every country do they call it something the like around the world bar crawl? there's a there's a word for it yeah but i was pretty around the world seems right around i was the world. pretty toasty by the time i got to china 
I saw that China had a uh, sign that said, hey, you can meet Mulan, who is my favorite Disney character. Well, and you had been building this up. You're like, I'm going to Disney and I'm going to do one thing. I, No matter how long it takes, I'm going to wait in line and I'm going to get a photo, photo with, with Mulan. Mulan. Yeah, because Mulan's very hard to find. And she, she you know, she, she's usually in the Chinese pavilion. We don't have that in L.A. and Anaheim. So uh, long story short, we come back when we know she has a line. There's a line full of all these, you know, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed children. And once I kind <laughs> Which of Which like, was the first concerning thing. Why do these children have tails? Why were they so bushy? <laughs> it was very shocking. Their so eyes were full I, of I needed to do some. <laughs> I needed to do some reconnaissance just to know if I needed to stay in this line. So I go all the way to the front, and then there's Mulan taking pictures of the kids. And she turns and around. she turns around, and she's maybe like one-eighth Asian. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. She and just like out of my drunk mouth spills, she's not even Asian. <laughs> <laughs> she was a very gentrified She's very Mulan. white Asian, yeah. And wow. I, I know she was probably part Asian. I respect that. But, you know, for me, I wanted to see my Chinese East Asian representation full out in display. He was and so I, crushed. I was so crushed <laughs> that I like... Arrested Development, sad Charlie Brown walked hey, back out of it, and you guys were you just you guys were like, wow, the mood totally shifted. And we were I was like, no, Eugene, at- Eugene, no, we can we no, can no, still she's take a picture. Full, she's no, come on, Asian. it'll make you happy. She's not even. It'll make Asian. you happy, Eugene. Oh, it Eugene. really made me sad. You can be you. Well, you can be Mulan then, and and then she'll <laughs> come on. The poor kids who heard me yell that also just got very confused. Yeah. Anyway, that was my sad Epcot story. Oh, so, would you want to be Mulan as Hell the yeah. character? Hell yeah, I'd be a great Mulan. Oh, and I also remember though there were three kids taking a photo with Mulan. You're like, the fucking kids are more Asian than Mulan. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were upset. You I also, were you saying you were like toasty? You're pretty drunk at that point. I, I would say like you were actually having one drink at every country, and that was about the seventh or eighth country. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, you were not a little toasted. You were pretty hammered. You were going for. It. Yeah, I was taking a picture with the fucking upset. kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, because all the Chinese kids were lined up and they were surrounding her. Oh, all the kids man. take a picture with me be more accurate than the fucking Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got upset with that, but then I got more drinks and then we rode the frozen ride and we were okay. Mm-hmm. We also the whole trip were looking for Moana. Oh, she's our Moana. favorite princess, Moana. and Moana does not exist at Disney yet. No, oh, well, Hawaii really? is not. But a there's country. a whole Polynesian world. I know, but Moana right? is not there. You know who the best characters Aww. to play are, though? Um, Gaston. Because he gets to, he literally walks around as just a dick to everybody. Yep. And then wow. Mer- Merida from Brave, who is like kind of the if female version of a fate, dick. Would yeah. you? Yeah. If you want to be a bear, do what you if want you to be a bear? Change your fate. Surprise, the whole movie's about bears. They have it the just, best. It, why is yeah. it? About, it's only about bears. <laughs> Why is it that bears? <laughs> my mother is a bear. I hate that movie. I hate that movie. My mother's a bear. There's my nephew's a bear. The trailer led you to believe it was about magical bears. And it's fucking about bears? <laughs> you think it's going to be about this woman winning an archery competition yeah. against all the odds? No. It's about her family turning into bears. <laughs> and then there's a big bear blanket that they hang on the wall. I'm like, oh, that's the legend is that the people turn into bears? The fucking, what? I, I hate it. I was so mad. And it's just, and then like, <laughs> what, the trailer's like, if you could change your fate, would you? But all it is is, do you want to change your fate into not being a bear? There's a bear curse. There's no fate changing. It's the terrible film. Don't you want to be a bear? It's only about bears. And it was also sad because Did it was, they want to it was be Pixar's bears? first like all and- human princess film yeah i don't know i don't remember you've seen why. it right there's no a i just make fun of the trailer because fate sounds so much like feet and, <laughs> and the the area, just imagine you like well i really wish i had zach's feet i well, could change my feet i well, could change my feet to that be is a little more dainty no that's actually more <laughs> if you could change your feet that's more accurate to the actual plot because they try to change their feet back from being bears you being bear oh, feet. i got these big old bear feet i'm so clumsy i actually think you would really like brave ned what if you could change your feet <laughs> <laughs> If you could have anyone's feet, who would you have and why? Ooh. No, I guess I'd want the biggest feet. Just the biggest ones. What the size are you feet? rocking? I'm only rocking a 13 wide. Mm. So like it's big compared to most people, but in the big foot world, it's barely in the new section of like the back of the store where right. the weird giant You're sizes like if are. I could, mm. If I'm already in the big foot world, why don't I have shack feet? I want like size 16 or something. You know, I don't remember the movie as well, but I felt equally dismayed in Frozen when they just spent so much time with these little rock trolls. Oh, those are the worst part of the I movie. I don't fucking get like, why are we yeah. spending half the movie with I little more, people? I want more of the gay spa family who's like, hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, they snuck. <laughs> they snuck in the gay couple. It was the owner of that and her, his husband and their kids. If you didn't catch it, I didn't. Mm. Frozen's very gay, and Frozen's everyone wants also to have so a girlfriend. Gay. It's so gay. Okay. I hate that film, not because of the gays. <laughs> the, I just I think that the movie fervor also around sucks. it. I, I think, think it's also super overrated. I like Frozen. It's I fine. like it too. Moana yeah. the music Moana's is good. Moana's the one you want to watch. Moana, she's Glenn. friends with the ocean. She's got the ocean's got a plague in it. Moana's <laughs> gonna say the world. Moana's a modern mass. You got, you got music the rock. by you got the rock. You got Lin music by Lin Man. Lin Man. Well. <laughs> making a soundtrack. Well, we're talking about these like postmodern era Disney films. You guys saw Tangled too, right? No. no You've never seen Tangled. I feel like you would really like Tangled. <laughs> I've fallen asleep in Tangled four times. But I, I feel like you'd like it. I have Tangled. time for one movie and one movie only. Moana. Moana. I like the Moana's one. With the turtle. With the Lin Man. She saves a little turtle. Remember and the that? Turtle, and the ocean is a person. That's confusing, but it's cool. It high fives her. <laughs> and then also almost lets her drown numerous times. <laughs> and then there's a big old crab and he sings a song that goes, Johnny. I can only sing that much because we get demonetized. So oh, yeah. man and the chicken. Oh, and the oh, chicken. hey, hey. chicken's oh. hysterical. He's so stupid. What's his name? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Oh, who could forget? Hey, hey, the chicken. And He's... I wanted more of that pig. The, the pig. pig. He just got left on the island. And the bad guy turns into be a good guy, but it's just misunderstood. Also, oh. that pig is going to grow up to get eaten. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. What? Oh, wait, let's go you through. Ever been to a Moana pig roast? <laughs> Ever been to any <laughs> Polynesian food? <laughs> what? Dinner. Let's talk about all the animals in Disney movies that after the movie would be turned into a delicious feast. Oh, Bambi. No. Bambi. Oh, JK, no. JK, venison's only like, okay. You know, nothing's as horrific, though, than the basic plot line of 101 Dalmatians. Oh, yeah. She oh, literally I mean, that's pretty amazing. Tried, it's amazing. She and tries she's also, to find puppies. Yeah. She's killed a lot of animals before that moment to you make know? those she's, coats uh it's i mean cruel cruel, cruel and like like evil top top three Disney there should have been a montage slash song where they show her killing all the animals prior <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i killed the skunk over here <laughs> chop 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 i killed the possum over here that's how she sings right <laughs> <laughs> oh she's she's like 60s scat rapping <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> i killed the skunk ba, 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 ba. okay no, she's, stabity, she's, stabity, she's stabity, a great vote i most people love Maleficent. I mean, now that she has her own live action standalone, but she was always mm -hmm. one of the best classical Disney villains. I think Ursula is the best. She's good. She's the best. She's, She's terrifying. Pretty good. Amazing. She scared me a lot. I have no I idea. They have to cast a drag queen in a live action yes. for that. There's no like way they Jafar. could cast someone else. Like, I was too Jafar. young to really not be scared mm. of them. They, they were really scary when those movies came out. You know, fun fact uh, the lead animator on Disney many of fun the. Fact. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the lead animator on a lot of the Disney villains were gay men. Oh, mm, yeah. There's always, fact, <laughs> there's always a lead uh, animator who is sort of in charge of the character, specific characters. And so you can actually tell, I think, when a straight man versus a gay man uh, is the lead on one of the princesses, the, the, the just Disney by the way that they look. Hmm. Yeah. I, are there examples of princesses that are? I believe done by a gay man versus a straight man. Yeah, I believe that both Jasmine and Ariel were straight men, and I think that Belle was a gay wait, man. Wait, so what's what's the the, the <laughs> tell of a gay drawing? <laughs> Just it's, so just, I, it's just it's just a little less gaydar, like my gaydar is not as refined in the illustration world. I think it's just a little less like I mean, I mean, just look at Jasmine's so hot. It's a little more fat. She's just like clearly hot. so hot. He's, There's a so, shot in that movie where when Jafar tells tells her that he uh, Prince Ali Abubu died, and then she <laughs> like kind of grabs her heaving chest and she backs up, and I was very confused so wait, as a child. What, was oh. all of Aladdin? Or just the character? Just the character. There's a different because lead animator. Aladdin so like also sexualized the princess. Aladdin's yeah. also pretty hot. Pretty That's hot. That's true. I mean, you know, universally, <laughs> most of the a, characters a are pretty hot. hot. guys, hot girls having a good time. I'm about to movie. drop another do -do -do Disney fun fact. <laughs> Aladdin is uh, also, man, oh man, my heart is palpitating. Uh, Aladdin is modeled after Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fun fact with Zach. And, and uh, it's kind of, you won't be able to unsee it. Ariel That's, was modeled mm -hmm. after Alyssa Milano. Yeah, a young Alyssa Milano. Because when like, that came out in 89, she was like the it a, girl. Yeah, she was in a sitcom. She was in uh, uh, Who's the Boss with Tony Danza, I believe. Tony Danza. I believe. I think wow. she was the, the yeah. teenage daughter. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah, Moana was modeled after the actor who played Carl Winslow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But you know, all the True, characters... It's crazy, but it's true. There was an interesting video I saw that all the Disney characters now, if you see the progression of the way they look, they're looking less adult-like and more like babies. Cherub. 
Yeah. You get to Moana. Like Moana. They're looking like actual like little babies. babies. Well, Pocahontas in the movie, like historically, is like what, 15, 16? She is, but she looks like she's you mean she in look, the historical 23 story? in the movie. Yeah, like but like real Pocahontas. Real Pocahontas was very was young. Yeah, like but, very so like young. in the movie, she 14. looks she's like 30. 25. Yeah. Oh, Pocahontas, I think, the most beautiful Disney princess. Like just, uh, I think she's just, the hair. I mean, a beautiful movie. The hair. Mm. You told you're the one who told me about this about like the difference between the A squad and the B squad of animators, yeah. which I find fascinating. There was I don't I don't know if they still employ that because they only do these CGI movies now. No, this was through the '90s, right? Through most of Disney history, they would have like an A team that worked on a larger funded Aladdin, longer production. Lion King. No, no actually, no. Yeah, no. Right. I heard that. I think it's like Lion King was B squad. Lion King. No, Lion King was B squad. Explain this. So basically, A versus B squad was the A team would work on these like larger, quote unquote, like Oscar bait, uh, beautifully Prestige. animated movies that they take longer on. And then the B squad, you know, hit up the ones that had a little quicker production timeline and were a little more fun. For the so people. Don't quote me on this, because, but I believe this is true. I believe that Lion King was seen as more of a B squad movie and, and Pocahontas, Pocahontas was their A squad movie. So when you watch them mm. back, if you watch Pocahontas, it is gorgeous, viscerally beautiful everything's hand painted in that movie um and, and I, I i have seen some scenes from lion king recently and the animation style is a little cruder it's a little but simpler the yeah. story is incredible and it's so it's fun, fun that, yeah. it, that you just get swept up in it yeah but um fun facts fun disney facts what was the jingle you did i did the facts with eugene <laughs> cool it's about 90 percent what he saying earlier so go ahead <laughs> <laughs> so uh you ever go to disneyland with your folks with your parents my parents yeah with my Parents? With my yeah. parents? My parents? Yeah. Have you been? No. When, wasn't well, that like a child? Well, like, yeah, yeah, as a baby. child. And you're Floridian, so. Oh, yeah. We you, went every single year. Oh, yeah. That's what shit. you do when you're from Florida. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do you now that I'm in the, Cali. Exactly. In Florida, you had a Florida discount. You know what the biggest bullshit is? <laughs> the biggest bullshit. Yo, fucking yeah. hit me, dog. The biggest bull Disney bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> Disney, Disney bullshit. <laughs> is that the year pass. For Disney World is which, wait, cheaper. Wait, which, which is yep, yep, Disney, than Disneyland. Which has five parks. I know. Is cheaper I know. than the season pass for Disney Land, well, which has two parks. I well, a couple you. reasons there. One, Disney, I always confuse them. Disneyland in California, even though it is smaller, has more rides than all of Disney World combined. That no. can't be true. That can't be true. Uh, uh, just told us that. Who what? Just, just told us. Really? Yeah. I don't what? believe huh. it. What? Yeah. I don't believe what? it. Because yeah. it's just all packed in there and it's you know, dense. Well, fucking, I mean, know what I'm fantasy say? land and Google Epcot it. Epcot and the Animal Kingdom are non ride forward. That's true. If yeah. you count rides, there's only about yeah. 10 in Epcot. Yeah. Experiences, sure. You got the whole world. Drinking. But yeah. rides. Also, uh, I, something like something crazy like 90% of people that go to Disney World only go once in their life. Because it's people come from all over the world. Yeah. So they're trying to encourage people. Like, actually, you said that that's like what you do in Florida, but apparently not as much. It's really a lot of their traffic comes from people all over the world. Mm. Whereas uh, Disneyland here, you get more. Repeat. I mean, imagine growing up internationally and seeing all this. One, you're obsessed with Disney movies. Everyone became obsessed with Disney movies. But then you know about Disney World and Disney. Yeah. If you're going yeah. to America, you yeah. want to drop by that weird ass place. You if know? I were planning a trip to America, I would just I would. I would go from L.A. to Orlando. I don't know. I don't. It, they seem pretty close. Miles, are you, you about to fact check me? Together. I'm fact checking. Are you about to oh, fact yeah, check fact my check Disney it. fact with Zach? <laughs> I hope by the way, check. If I'm wrong, can you just um, edit out your correction and instead we'll have Keith singing? Nope. This is <laughs> Keith singing Wrecking this Ball. This is live and raw. Yeah. I came in like a bow <laughs> and our. Even though Disney World has four parks and Disneyland only has two. The number of rides in Disney World, 45. The number of rides in Disneyland, 40. Oh, oh but they're very almost close. the same. Oh, Pretty close. Wow, yeah. you look wow. stupid, Zach. Wow, wow. you came in. Wow. You, you were disrupting in my Disney bullshit Coming with your bullshit. I am the king. <laughs> that I fact is not king. so fun now. <laughs> Mm. Not such a fun fact. And this has been the, Miles Disney fact rich fact. The rides are different, though. What I envied about um, uh, our friends in Florida when they have the Disney passes, they could be like, oh, we're going to go to Epcot for dinner. Yeah. And they would just go in and they'd go to one of the restaurants for dinner. You could go. And then they the, leave. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's so cool. And because there's so many different parks, you could be like, instead of going to the zoo, 
You go to the fucking zoo that has roller coasters. <laughs> and when you go to when you go to want to experience culture, you go to the culture the cultural center that has alcohol and rides. Miles, when's that fact from? Because there's a new Star Wars land. Maybe it's gonna change. Okay. Ooh, maybe it's gonna right. get closer. Maybe right. maybe maybe I was uh uh This uh, is from twenty eighteen maybe- December. December Oh, Maybe the future was whispering into my there's ear. There's only two or three rides at We're Star Wars. We're closing right that now. gap. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's over five though. We're closing yeah. the gap. We're it's getting closer. Getting close, getting close. <laughs> so my birthday is in June and sometimes <laughs> it, the what, last when, day when's your of birthday, school. Uh, sometimes the last June. day of school would line up with my birthday. Oh wow! And oh. we would go straight up from the last day of elementary school, drive to Disneyland, wow. and it was my birthday. Wow. And by Disneyland, I mean Disney World. And it was like the best weekend ever. That's a it, fucking we, we did dream. this basically every year. So it sounds like your parents were really cool. Oh yeah. Did they chaperone like a whole party, or did other parents have to come? What? What party? Oh no, it was, no, it was just sister. me and my family. Oh, yeah, it wasn't the whole school. <laughs> Ned's parents didn't bring the whole school. Yeah. Yeah. My birth- I would have other things for birthday parties. Gotcha, gotcha. So, do your parents? Always- I don't know that we ever did it. We did do a high school trip to Disney World. I did that. That was pretty fun. I don't think I did a Disney World party. Did my parents what? Did your parents always like take you on surprise trips like that? Were they those types? My parents never took me anywhere. No, oh, I see. You, you're like talking about me to like set up something about yourself. Okay, cool, 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 cool. cool, cool. <laughs> no, no, I was trying to. I was trying to provide an elegant That's segue to another uh, topic that we're covering. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, man. My parents always surprised me with like awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like super fun. Like, <laughs> no, I had friends who constantly had parents. They're basically them, like, the bond traps. Yeah. No, I had I had a neighbor who like they'd be like, oh, we're we're going to Disneyland this weekend. I'm like, what? You just you just gonna go to Disneyland this weekend? I was like, yeah, we got plane tickets. We're going. I'm like, well, you can't just. You can't just all of a sudden you're going to Disney. What are you talking about? Well, so Jacksonville was about two hours from Orlando. Well, I was in Tennessee, and, half, and then the people were just going to fly. Like that's they, crazy. They just took that's trips. Crazy. They had some money. That's crazy. Money, money changes things. Yeah, I, I I don't even think I ever went on summer vacation every year. Most of the time, we would just be at home. Yeah, <gasps> that's sad. Oh, but you went to that. Oh, dope no, oh, we don't like that. that dope. You went to that cool water park, we, though. We I loved the, water parks as a kid. The water park was less than our ways. So that yeah, was because you didn't yeah. need to travel. You had everything you want, everything you have. In Austin. Like how regularly we went on trips. I mean, we didn't go every year, but we went on like little little ski weekend. Oh my god, I didn't ski until like I was eighteen. Well, I grew up in. Oh, you were you in know, the north. I was, I was yeah. there. We went to fucking the same place every year, twice a year, from the age of nine until in about the Carolinas, two years right? Where's ago. that? Hilton Head, South Hilton Carolina, Head. Oh. which was great. And then I've been there about four, actually forty <laughs> times. Like I, actually, I've been there about forty times. Did and, you find <laughs> a sense of like this is like the the constant like? So I don't know. Was it nice that it was you had really, that consistency? It was really fun in like junior high area and early high school because I would like meet other teens there. Then when I was in college, it sucked because there were no yeah. college kids there at all. Like there was nobody for me. Like and I was alone and I would just be going with my parents. I'm like I had no friends. I knew nobody there. There's nothing really to do. I could go play miniature golf by myself. That was about all I did do. That was great, but uh, everything else, like there was nothing to do, so, so it kind of sucked. We had a spot like that, but it was actually a really exciting, positive thing for me because it was my dad went to this place in upstate New York called Thousand Island Park that's on the St. Lawrence River, right between border between New York State and Canada. My grandparents lived there. That's where we would go every summer, and my dad would like spend all summer there when he was growing up. We would just go for like a week or something, but it was like I would look forward to going there. Because it was the same place every time, and I would have like my summer friends that I would see like right. every summer there, and they would have like a lot of activities. It was I don't, a great I don't place think for I kids. Would, I don't think I could ever bring my family to like my old stomping ground from when I was younger. Because I bet you he just like got into shenanigans up there, and now all of a sudden it's like families up there too. You're commingling memories. That's messy. Mm, that's true. I do. I bet you as an adult, party I went there and realized that there was a bar. Yeah, that was in the basement of the hotel. I was like, I never knew this existed. I the bet l- your dad was partying. The last few times I went to Hilton Head, I did find the bars and I started having a really great time. And I, it was just like we were just going around Christmas time, so my brother was there. Both of my brothers were there, but my oldest brother has kids. But so mm. Brian and I would go tear it up and confuse the heck out of everybody there while we're singing karaoke because we only sang. It- it is Celine strange Dion to Lady see Gaga. like uh, somebody that you're friends with as kids in this kind of like we're not really friends we're just sort of our summer friends as an adult at a bar it's like oh hey, hey. how's it going Jimmy 
<laughs> yeah, Jim, Jimmy. Here's the thing that I know sets up a story you have. Uh, uh, do you think about like ways that your parents accidentally traumatized you as a kid? And I mean, trauma with like a lower T. And do you think about that net of like, oh my God, like anything that I do, because you're a father now, oh, yeah. like you could mean well, but things that you do mm. will have this unintended lasting impact on your kid. And I feel oh. like it's just like damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think it's everything a parent does. Everything you every do, everything you do as child. a parent impacts your child one way or the other. And all the things that you do trying to mean well have a, a consequence in the other direction. Do you have yeah. a lasting thing about you that is just because of like normal punishment or things as a child? Oh, I bet. I have one. Yeah, let me yeah. hear it. I I don't like receiving phone calls <laughs> from people I don't know or, or even like making phone calls because when I was a kid and I would be at my neighbor's house, if my mom called, it just meant that I had forgotten to do a chore and I was in trouble. So with the phone rang, I would like, and then it, it came to the point where I was so like anxious that anytime the phone rang at her house, I would run and see the caller ID. And if it was my home, I would just run home oh and I would just be like, oh, I was on my way home already. I, di I didn't know you called. And then she'd be like, you forgot to do this chore. I'm like, oh, that's why I came home because I realized I forgot to do that chore. And like, but it, it gave me so much anxiety as a child that because like I would be in trouble if she called. That was all it meant. So then I really don't like phone calls because Anytime I associate the them rings, with trouble. Keith goes, ah! <laughs> like even now like uh like making a, an important call like stresses me out and i think it's partially just because wow. of this phone call thing mm -hmm. so like i don't uh i don't like to talk to people on the phone unless i'm like good friends with them like i've, I've talked to friends on the phone that's fine but i don't like talking to people i don't know on the phone i feel like you've got uh -huh. a million eugene oh yeah because of asia the war, the war. <laughs> I, was, I was also gonna say it was because of the war honestly yeah, i think everything came from being from a i guess like a war-torn country but yeah, there's a million examples. Um, being spanked, I think that's a huge one. I was spanked. A lot of people weren't spanked in mm -hmm. growing up in our generation. And uh, I, my mom tried to ground me once. She tried to ground me from dinner because she was so mad at me. She didn't know what else to do. And she didn't have anything in her arm's reach to, <laughs> to hit me with. So she said, you're going home. You're going to go to dinner without this spaghetti I tried to make for the first time. And so like, uh, Fine, I don't want your yeah, I was shit, like, no, I don't want it. So I go in my room and then like 20 minutes later, she comes. She's like, come, come eat. I don't understand this. <laughs> but it's like things because my neighbors, they grounded their kids, but they grounded them from like really specific things. And getting grounded is like interesting. I wish I was grounded because it's like psychological warfare with the parents. Uh, they grounded their kids, my neighbors for from desserts. They grounded oh. them from TV, like very specific things, you know, no TV for a week. No desserts a week, but then it gave the kids complexes. So then one of the kids started overeating desserts. So it was this whole like weird, weird like mind fuck. And when you just kind of slap your kid's ass for a few minutes, then it's like, okay, I know not to do that anymore. Oh. Slap him on the ass. Slap Let's him on the ass. A spank, not a slap on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Slapping me on you the bad ass. Boy. But yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I always get very interested to know if someone was was spanked as a child. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly how my mom says. She goes, this is a very bad boy. I'm going to slap you on the ass. Slap the ass so hard. I want to sketch of I a slap parent. slap so hard your ass. A parent is trying to punish you but doesn't realize double entendres. Oh, that, yeah. My parents have no idea what those are. Uh, she also ruined uh, holidays for me, which we don't really celebrate anymore because when I was about six, she the parents buy the presents. And then they write from Santa because that's what the white people do. So they said, I don't know. Okay, I write from Santa. And we were so excited. We we're like, Santa, because we learned from the other kids who he was. And then I was about seven or six. And she just one morning, she just like, we're just like, oh, Santa brought the present. She goes, you know, it's, it's from me and your dad. <laughs> we spent all money for you. And you say thank you to some fat white man you don't know. <laughs> He's not real. He had no job. He's not buying for you. <laughs> I buy. Thank me. Your mom. I work. <laughs> I think she's totally right. She Don't was right. Credit yeah. to some other person. The kids need to know that their parents are working hard for their present. But what yep. about magic? magic you can do both. You can have a present from Santa and a present from your mom. You know, that's something I've also wondered about a lot is like the pros and cons of encouraging magic in the world for your child. Because you are lying to them. You are yeah. you are mm -hmm. you are seeding mistrust uh -huh. in your child. You are telling yeah. them that I am giving you an impression of the world that is false. And now you're going to grow up and realize that I'm not an authority. I'm a liar. Wow. The per the mom and dad that you love so dearly have been lying to you. But on the other side, magic. 
You've got to lie to them, though, because they're going to watch TV and read books, and those aren't real necessarily. So you've got to be the first to lie. I have (laughs) heard that in, you know, in the time where Wes is, he's like a year Uh old. uh, Until they get a little older, you want to focus all of your picture books on things that are real. Oh. Because it helps them learn, oh, this is what a duck is. Right. Versus, what is a dragon? I think, <laughs> and why does it love yeah. tacos so much? Well, it's much. like I think about like, wow, if only could I could be as excited about real animals as I were about Pokemon. Mm, yeah. You know, like the world is amazing. Animals are are awesome, but I can only be excited about like animals Fake with fire animals. tails. I think socially, for the sake of your kid, it might be different now with the information at fingertips. But you know, once you hit middle school or like junior high, that's when you should probably start shifting over into, oh, Santa isn't real. But I think giving your kids that imagination, that's good. Well, but Ned's saying you can't start it too early. So what's that sweet spot Well, you know, I think it's okay to be like, oh, this is from Santa and you're happy and you're five or four. Yeah, but I think, you know, you also then risk making your kid the dick. Because then yeah. you yeah, go you to, the, I walked into class people. and people said, you know, I was the kid who like f- yeah. fourth grade. They're like, oh, I got this from Santa. I'm like, Santa isn't real. Yeah. That's You're your stupid. mom. You're stupid. Your Asian mother got that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank her. Thank her. She That's exactly well, what I said. You know, Eugene, you talk about complexes and we were both not allowed to play video games as a child. Oh, and yeah. now. Wait, you weren't allowed either? Yeah. Oh, but I, now you play like. You went in the opposite direction. The yeah. I love playing video games and you like yeah. don't like playing video games. Why didn't your parents let you play? Because they thought it was like bad for Mill my eyes and my yeah. brain and you know yeah yeah i i, I it took me uh, i had to like earn up the money to buy an n64 myself and this oh, wasn't yeah. until like i was like 12 or 13 yeah i would so the, not as a kid one the naughtiest rule breaking i did was sneak to uh my one friend that's You're sad. So naughty. my one friend's house to so play to play boy. uh n64 just because I never oh, got yeah. to touch it. Ooh. Oh my yeah. god, you're my mom, so naughty. My mom wouldn't let so me play because she saw from her Asian friends that their kids were turning into like a classical nerd. Sure. And they got introverted. And what? we were already kind of like made fun of a lot for being Asians where we grew up. So my mom wanted to make me like a cool Asian in her mind. So she and said- And to do that- <laughs> Don't play video games. And to make you not play video games. Oh, she said it would give me thumb cancer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. She said, this will give you thumb cancer if you play. So I was so terrified of it. And every time I played <laughs> with a friend, I'd be like, you know, that's fun. But, you know, you're going to get thumb cancer. Do you have any thumb con- like condoms? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, she also, catch she did the same thing. You know, um, people who have a tick where they shake their leg like this. Oh, you, I do. Yeah. Big I time. notice when everyone does it because my mom said you'll get thigh cancer. <laughs> so just wow. cancer was her like reason for everything it's a like i don't know parenting thing when you're just like there's one band-aid you're like this fixes my everything mom would I'll just say throw up the that it would just be bad for my eyes or that it would be bad for my brain i remember even after i saved up all this money refing kids soccer games to buy an n64 uh she would only like i would be capped at 30 minutes a day which I don't know if you guys out there play video games, but yeah, thirty minutes is barely enough time to turn the system. Especially on. if you start a new game, there's always going to be like oh ten goodness. minutes of setting up the yeah. game, and then you have twenty minutes of learning how to play. Any it. sort of RPG, it's like, what was I even doing and thinking and trying to do here? You know what? The joke's on everyone because in today's society, we have binge watching, we have YouTube, we have streaming yeah. and mobile. We've become a culture in which all you do in your spare time is stare at a screen. Mm, I yeah. must have been a real piece of shit as a kid because I had all these, and you guys are not. As a kid, that. yeah, you grew out of that. Thank we God. all agree. <laughs> but I, we had all these rules, and I did not follow any of them. I got home, I watched TV for like two hours. Then I did a yeah, like I had two the whole hours. the whole tsunami yeah, block. I watched Dragon Ball Z. Tsunami is. Dope. I watched Sailor Moon. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like there were two Dragon Ball Zs. And if I ever missed yeah, a Dragon Ball Z because it was syndicated in order, mm-hmm. I would cry because I did because then I couldn't. I just the story would be missed. And then I would do a little bit of homework. Then I would watch The Simpsons for an hour during dinner. Whoa. Then I would watch whatever Fox night show there was. As I got older, it turned into the NBC comedy block. Like my, I was re- I, also, I used to wake up early to watch Pokemon. Like I was watching mm-hmm. like crap. five hours of TV too. a day. Like really? that's how what I was raised on. 100% exactly the same <laughs> oh experience. God. But mine was just because I was the third boy. And they didn't give a shit. No, they, your parents just give up. By the time it was the third, the third of the same thing, like, well, fuck, there's nothing new to learn from this one. Just let, just make sure he doesn't kill himself. And when you're the first <laughs> and a real chore, they're also forced to give up. Yeah, I mean, like, my, I really was that they really did limit 
David and Brian from watching The Simpsons playing video games. But by the time they, I was a kid who wanted to do that, they were older and they were like, well, they are teenagers now. They can handle this. And I was too young. And they well, I guess Keith can just play too. And my brothers are like, you're only going to let him play. You never let us do anything. You're going to let him get away with everything. And Did you guys like, eat dinner oh, yeah. at the dinner table? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was no. like a big thing with my My family. parents would force us to. Yeah. I like yeah. eating dinner at the dinner I, table. Same. Every dinner I took downstairs and I, I ate w- w- watching The Simpsons. Oh, and we tried wow. to do like the worst. one, <laughs> one a week where it was like, this is our family dinner. And my sister and I were like, what is this? But you're also like New York. So you have a little... We had all these like everybody's got things to do. Southern yeah, values. Yeah, we, we had like go play outside and yeah. then do your homework. And yeah, I then, mean, we were yeah. God, we were godless. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like running yeah. around barefoot and in, in like lots of yards and creeks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. so many creeks. With, you know, there's where like, is Keith at the creek? There's a lot uh, yeah. you can do with sticks at the yeah. creek. I just like playing at with the sticks creek. at the yep. creek. At the creek. Yeah. yeah, I would. There were little craw ditties in with our the, creek, and I'd pick we them up. We had catfish in my creek. Throw them at each oh, other. We had. A, we we had did a, like uh, you know home road swings. Uh, we had a we rope catfish swing. in my creek. Yeah, I had a little like a old tree that we rope swings are so dangerous. They're so fun. We you're like Zach staring at us like this is a Mark Twain novel. What's happening? I did that as a kid. Like I. Had a little pond uh, at the bu- at the end of my street, and I'd catch tadpoles in a little net. Maybe would, that's uh, why you had summer camp a lot, because so you can to get like to the outdoors. For- my parents yeah. were like, "We're gonna force you to fucking go outside. <laughs> you're gonna get some sun. And you're gonna like it. You're gonna love it." I uh, didn't have any brothers. My sister didn't do like sports as much, uh, and I had a good close friend that sometimes would like play sports to catch together. But sometimes I would want to play sports, but I only had myself. So what I would do This is so sad. Is I know, it's, it's I know gonna be sad, to but also it, at the time it was awesome. I would throw the ball up like a football. I'd throw a football up and then try and run, run, run uh-huh. under it and catch sad, it. And I would try and like thing I've ever heard. It was awesome. I did this too. It was awesome. I'd try and throw it farther and farther and run faster and faster uh-huh. just to get underneath it. And I developed like, you know, rules. <laughs> that made it harder for myself. I did more like against a wall, like with a tennis ball or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. did that too. Yeah. All right. Ugh. Number one greatest childhood game is keep the balloon from falling. That's a good That's one. That's pretty that good. One's one. good. Yeah. The TV. world will explode. About number, one, number one. Nothing can beat it. Have <laughs> you guys, do you guys remember Buns Up? Buns? What? Yeah, oh, we didn't up. call it buns up. We we played it. We called it's it. It's the one with the tennis ball. Heads up, seven up. No, no, the, no, different. Game. That's a different one. But it's uh, a tennis ball. You all stand up against a huge wall. Yeah, right, and then up. you throw it right. And basically, if you throw it and it hits you on the way back, you have to go touch the wall. Oh yeah, yeah. But if yeah, someone yeah. gets it and they throw it at you, hit you, then you're quote unquote up for. Um, well, we, we said something very on PC, but you go up <laughs> and you get uh, up for fucking. pelted with it, <laughs> at, and they try to hit your ass. Yeah. 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 Do you remember yeah, that yeah. game? Oh yeah. yeah. So it would be a, a wall and you would have to like throw it at the wall. And if you didn't uh if it didn't if you didn't make it all the way to the wall, you would have to like run up touch the wall. And if yep. you didn't and you, make it to the wall, you get your ass someone hit you get your ass it, slapped. You get your ass beat. <laughs> slapped I liked it like Mama ball. Yang. I liked it more when Ned described <laughs> it. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand uh like how how some of these games like like surface and then actually spread? Yeah, we all knew that game. How is that possible? When they're clearly yeah. dumbass bullshit games that some kid was just like, okay, here's the rules. So, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna throw everybody get on a wall. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the ball and then the balls and when I grab the ball, I throw it at your butt. And this was pre-internet. Yeah, no, it's the kid mafia, right? And, and there yeah. was a bit of peer pressure, right? Like. You know, you didn't have to go up and stand at the wall and get pelted. But, but, but if everyone it. is like, no, you, oh, you got it. Guys, like the most anxiety, what, what teaches you anxiety is standing to get picked for a team. Uh, ah, yeah. Ooh. Oh, that is, that I'm teaches good at sports you. And I still remember the standing times there when I got picked last. Thank God I was big. Like yeah, you're as a tall. kid, I was big. So people just picked. assumed I was athletic because I was tall. So like they would just pick me like at mm-hmm. least second or third, never first round. Yeah. But never last. Yeah. I was picked earlier because I didn't play video games and I was fast. Mm. Oh, I yeah. was regularly <laughs> picked last. And I thrived on it's it. It's all that TV watching, bro. Low expectations. That's a bar I can hobble over. Well, you know who can raise those expectations? Hmm. Someone by the name of Miles Bonsignore who can give us a little advice that will go for, for Miles. Miles, hit us with that advice. Do you want to be a strong little man? (laughs) Do you want the ass of a much better woman? 
Whoa. Ooh. Oh, this is taking a turn. <laughs> I'm like in. This. Get supportive shoes. Mm. I had been wearing skate shoes for many years, <laughs> and they were bad for my feet. Oh, my I, God, Miles, you got new shoes. I got new shoes. Well, I got to tell you. Oh. By skate, Miles, by skate I, shoes, you mean like Converse? I mean uh, like su- vans. Supra's oh, vans. vans. Yeah. All those shoes, but if you get skate shoes, they're designed to have your foot and the board be as close as possible. Got it. But that's not good for your feet. When mm. you're skating, you're going to want to feel that board. You want to feel the board. When you're board. popping an ollie and grinding on that rail, you can really feel every cubic inch of that shit. Shaft. Yeah, cool. the shaft, the wheel, yeah. the spoke, the screw. But you're going to want to get supportive shoes for your arch because if you have foot problems, you're going to have calf problems and it's going to move up. You're going to have hip problems. You're going to have back problems. Hip bone's connected to the back <laughs> bone. bone. It all starts with the shoe. So I got some Nike Rosha runners. Uh, Do you get the Rosha 1s or the Rosha 2s? These are the Rosha 1s. All right. Not uh, and sponsor, they're super comfortable. They could be. Crazy kick-ass shoes. Those are cool too, Keith. Too. They're so red. I like those. also have Nike shoes. Those are nice. I'll tell you, I'll give a free plug to Rosha because those are some of the most comfortable shoes you could get. Mm. The Rosha 2s are even more comfortable. They have like little memory foam. Ooh. It's great. Well, you know, I think mm. a lot of young people look at those types of shoes or anything with support. They think, oh, that's what my grandpa does. No. But they should start investing now. Miles, I was yelling at I was yelling at Miles like what like three days ago because his shoes were not just those flat skater shoes but had like holes and rip, I know like, I'll you- tell you what Zach I felt embarrassed <laughs> yeah and I went on Zappos that night. And wow. I ordered shoes because I knew that I need to replace those Wait, shoes. Wait, this was because of Zach. Did I peer pre- Did you? I shame you into being a better man? Zach shamed me, and I deserved it. And now <laughs> I'm a better man for you were it. A naughty little. Is boy. that why you? Is that why you led the advice with strong little man? <laughs> yeah, because you. I want to be strong little man like, like Zach. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's from all that yoga. Yeah. yeah. No, so, I, I, I just I worried about you because I, I know that it really has an impact. Well, why didn't you talking? buy him shoes? <laughs> I should. That would be. That's like our version of YouTubers surprising people with cars. <laughs> <laughs> surprising my employee with fifty dollars shoes. <laughs> The supportive sneakers. I would love that. God, yeah, we just don't, we don't have the money like other YouTubers to do that. Like, I don't well, know how they have. They're always the like, money. I'm surprising this person with a hundred thousand dollars. Videos make a fuck ton of money. You look, they got like eight ad breaks. We're getting ten million views. <laughs> those those videos are making a fuck ton of money. We gotta do the same thing. I got, we gotta give each other Teslas. We gotta buy each other a mountain. We had a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bought my buddy a mountain. mountain. I bought, bought a mountain. my buddy a mountain. Got yeah, I mean, billion dollars. I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled. I would be. I would be down to do that. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this mountain? <laughs> I gotta keep All right, up I guess we gotta go buy a mountain now. I yeah. find every time I buy shoes, I, I own a bunch of different shoes, but I only end up wearing the same one pair every day. I know. I slip I, them on, slip them off. It's too hard. I wanted a pair that I could like, I'm on my feet all day shooting yep. the cameras at, at you guys. Mm-hmm. So I want to be comfortable. And I was so uncomfortable before. You know what Those you gotta shoes do? look great. Thank They're you. very comfortable. They Highly recommend them. I'm sure I they like feel them. good. They feel great. And Supportive. breathable mesh. Super brave. Uh, good also, arch support. Um, They don't have the best arch support, but I've actually also heard you need to get inserts Every person needs to get shoe inserts. There it is. Because it's you're everybody walks a little bit differently. And Can I jump on this advice for Miles? Hop on. What's up, party people? <laughs> oh God. Get <laughs> oh, oh, please, dude. Uh, inserts oh, for your shoes. You gotta get inserts. It costs you ten dollars a pop, and yeah. it will make every pair of shoes that you have, your boots, your your old sneakers, whatever, gives you support, makes it more comfortable. Do you I love want it. to have Happy feet? <laughs> or Are happy you feet too? Tired of the way your foot feels? <laughs> <laughs> I do want one of those like custom insoles that cost like a lot of money where yeah. they, they like scan your feet. I would like, love to do that. Those are expensive. Those are like a yeah. hundred bucks, right? I know, but think about how good your feet will feel. Use them every day. I, 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 is, that an, is that a compelling video? Maybe. Oh, we am get, I weird <laughs> that I like I like like kind of uncomfortable shoes, yes. like dress shoes, and then at the end of the day when they're really sore, you're like, I did something. You kind of like pain. Though. I kind of like it. It's because you like assurance that you did <laughs> did work mm-hmm. because of the war. You, well, is it like you bad little boy? It's like friends of mine who were trained like from a young age. I'm gonna slap your ass, bad little boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to slip your ass, you belly to boy. I also uh, mm. enjoy that impression, but will not replicate it. <laughs> <laughs> Rip <right>. my stocking. <laughs> all right, anyway. well, that's been all the time we have for today's episode. This has been the Tripod. Thanks 
so much for listening and for spending time with us. And as one final update, my heart is pounding, my palms are sweaty, and Can I you go to the hospital. I might have to go to the hospital. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe, leave us five star reviews, check us out on YouTube if you're not there already. And uh, right now we're maybe on tour. No. Uh, that yeah. out. We might yeah. just we, we're about to go on tour or we're on tour, so please tickets might still be available. Legends Check of it the out. Internet tour, tryguys.com slash tour. And our new book, The Hidden Power of Effing Up. What else can we plug? The uh, Patreon. We have a Patreon. You can give us money. <laughs> and also, um, I Support. have an Etsy shop where I make tiny hats for turtles. Ooh, Ooh. I want that. Which means they have to be really tiny you better deliver. to be a tiny hat on a turtle. Mm-hmm. Better deliver. Um, I also make Fabrice eggs. Venmo me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get Venmo requests sometimes, and I, I am like, yeah, I'll give you three bucks. Oh my god, you can oh ven- my god, people Venmo me problem. all the time. I think it's so strangers funny. Venmo uh-huh. requests me. When people Venmo request like sixty five bucks, I'm like, go to hell. But if they request, actually, a game I used to play with uh, my buddy Chris Reininger is we would just charge each other like forty two cents for for inane things. Mm. Very fun. If you charge me under twenty five cents, <laughs> I'll pay the first uh, forty people. No, I have people saying like th- <laughs> three hundred dollars, and the subject is. Um, Please send now. That's great. So yeah. that if you scroll through fast, you might be like, oh shit, I have to get something. And I, I was mean, like, what did I hit? Still waiting button. on this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, until next time, this has been the tripod. Or, yeah, this has been the tripod. <laughs> until next time, keep hit us with the official tripod theme song. Slap my ass. <laughs> I'm a naughty little boy. This is the tripod. Until next time, stay beautiful. You do it with my mom's accent now? <laughs> No, no, I would. <laughs> <laughs>